back with another video. This week, I've been having some interest in the, I've been seeing a lot of the note-taking apps that are using that, that graph view and the, the vectors, like um, Obsidian and Ample Note and like Rome Research. So I was trying them out and I kind of want to learn more about how those things work. So I found this tutorial from Superbase and I'm gonna go through that today. It doesn't really teach you how to create one of those like exact note-taking apps or anything like that but it shows you how those like how to actually create the embeddings and stuff like that so that's what I'm gonna do today I really just want to learn more about what what that stuff is so yeah so we'll see how it goes yeah so this is the video I'm gonna watch today it's this one by Superbase the missing pieces to your AI app it's going to use PG Vector and RAG, um, which I forget what it exactly stands for, but I think it helps with like retrieving data, retrieving files or things based off those embeddings. But this tutorial is pretty cool. I'll link it below. I haven't gone through it yet. It's like two hours. So it's just going to be a step by step guide on like how do you build a production ready AI app go. using PG Vector? Yeah, build a production ready AI app. So we'll see. I haven't really mess with web in a while either so I've been wanting to get back into that space so this is gonna use I think Next.js which is like I think a framework on top of React so it'd be cool to be using Next.js for the front end and the API and then um, Superbase for the database I don't know how it's gonna do the embeddings or anything like that but yeah I don't know if you guys really know much about this vector stuff I don't but seems pretty cool it's like you you take data and then categorize it and break that down into an array of numbers and that array of numbers tells you about the data and then you can see the how close other arrays are or other vectors are and that tells you how related they are so I don't know we'll see I'm gonna learn about it today Speaking of learning, finding good resources to learn new topics can sometimes be challenging, but there's a fun and easy way to learn a lot of topics in tech. That takes us to our sponsor today, Brilliant. Brilliant's the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. It has thousands of free lessons from basics to advanced topics, and new lessons are added every month. The course on how LLMs work has been super helpful for me to understand how these large language models actually work under the hood. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for a free and full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash James Harrison or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So I got through a lot of the not a lot, I got through like 40 minutes of it so far. And what I did was we have authentication done and we can now upload documents to the different buckets. But what we're learning about now is pretty interesting. So we're gonna learn about the actual creating the embeddings part of it. And this is the part that I didn't know. So I'm excited for this. So again, what the embeddings are is pretty much just creating a, a vector of what the the document or piece of text or whatever is about right and then you can create vectors for all the different information or documents that you have and then based off of how close they are in the space that tells you know if the documents are related or not so what the tutorial today is helping us with is retrieval augmented generation which is where you can like chat with your documents so based off your message it goes and it pulls the the topic or the, the answer to your question from the documents 
to do that now, it has to know how to retrieve the documents that are most relevant. So it actually does it in a way that's different than I thought. I thought what it was doing was taking the whole document and creating the embedding for it. Um, but it's not, because apparently what can happen is if, depending on how big the document is, that embedding can't accurately represent all the contents of the document. So it'd be too broad. So what they do is they actually split the documents. They have, so there's two tables that are going to be in this database. There's one that's going to store the actual whole document. And then you see that stores the reference right here and the user that created it. And then what we're actually going to be doing is breaking the documents up into sections. And then those sections will have embeddings for each of the doc those document sections. So then we get a more accurate representation of what the, the actual document is about. Now, I'm assuming when we try to retrieve the documents now, we're going to retrieve it based off of the section and then go back up to the parent. But we'll see. That's where I'm at so far. for a while I got like an hour left in the video so far where I got let me see this. so far what I can do is now we can upload the files so we can upload them all right so like for example this one that I uploaded I can upload another one let's go to downloads boom Roman Empire and then you have to refresh so it uploads to the database so that's all done. And then you can also click it to view it. And then you know you can download it from here if you want to. The next section I'm getting into is the part that I really want to see, which is the whole how to embed the data. So got like an hour left on the video. But I'm going to take a break, go to the gym, maybe eat some food or something, because your boy is tired.
little native. What's up, guys? So it's like <laughs> two days later now. I don't know what happened after the gym. I fell asleep or something. But last night I did some more of the tutorial and I got it to the point where it's creating the embeddings. So now when you insert into the database, it, it automatically creates those embeddings for you. So let me see if I can show you. So the way it works is you have a, you insert into the database and then once you insert it, fires off a function and then that function will create the embeddings so it's like async it's pretty cool all right let's see so i put two files in there i got this guy this markdown file and then this other one and then if i go to the tables we go to the documents you'll see there's two documents so so the embeddings aren't on this level. They're broken up into sections. Oh, you're not even seeing it. Ooh. All right, so we got, if we go to the documents, you'll see there's, god damn. Keep focus, I want to focus. All right, if we go to the documents, you'll see there's two documents here, but the embeddings aren't on this level. The embeddings are on the, the document sections. So then now these are all the different sections for each of those documents. And notice here, that's where that embedding is. So this is what they look like. Just a long list of numbers. Oh, that's not how I see it. I don't know how to see it. Yeah, it's just a long list of numbers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the part of it where, which will allow me to chat with the, the data. So we'll see how it goes. For some reason, like I, I wasn't passing like an authorization header. I don't know what happened, so I cheated. I finished the tutorial, but it didn't work. So I cheated and I just cloned their repo, like from their steps, and then got it up and running. Um, it it's cool. It works. So let me show you what happened. All right, so. Yeah, so I uploaded these three files. These are their sample files. It's about the Roman Empire. But then you can come here and now I can chat with it. I can say like, what? Uh, let me type it. So like, so like, what did the Romans eat? Send. Boom. And it answers. 
Now the answers are strictly based from our code base. I mean, uh, the documents that's up there. None of the answers will be like hallucinated. And that's really simple. It's just because it's just done a normal GPT um, message here. That just says only answer from the documents allowed. But yeah, I'm gonna try to use this for like my own knowledge base and see what happens. Overall, though, pretty cool. I'm gonna mess around with this some more and like put my own documents up there. And I'm gonna try to see if I can chat with them, see if I can find connections between them and just see what happens. But that's it for this one. If you guys have any experience with vector databases, let me know. Um, let me know if you know any other cool libraries or uses for it too.